Hello, networkers, and welcome back to another episode of Ask the Network Engineer, where I will answer one of your questions. In this episode, I want to answer some of your questions related to career advice and next steps. I didn't want to put it into a q and I want to treat it as a separate episode to answer some of your direct questions. I have four questions, so let's go ahead and get started. And the first question is posted by Mohammed, and he says the following. So he saw uh, my video about life in the knock, and it was a really good one. Thank you very much. That actually is a very popular one, by the way, for the Ask Network Engineering series. So awesome. I, I'm glad that helped. So he's a fresh graduate of computer science. He finished, he got a CCNA, and he's working at as a knock engineer at a tier two ISP. So he's starting his job, but he doesn't have direct access to the equipment that to see the BGP configuration. That will be common. NOC personnel don't really have access to those level of routers because it's critical. If you log in and make a mistake, it is detrimental. So that's very common. That's more for the network engineering staff. So just something to keep in mind. All right, so he's getting a lot of different job offers and he has really kind of three questions. Uh, already one question of what he should do, what, uh, what kind of career advice he should kind of look into. So should he, one, go for a solution provider who is a Cisco Go partner, or maybe a information security firm working with Rapid5 and Kapersky, or should he stay at the NOC and just spend his time studying at the NOC to, per to perfect his skills and concepts? And currently income is not a major priority. He basically wants to learn and to become a network engineer. That sounds very much like me. So let's talk about that right now. So again, this is a great question and this really reminded me of myself 20 years ago. Being a network engineer was really important. It was very exciting for me. So I would do anything. I was willing to do anything. Uh, work for free just because I wanted the opportunity of gaining the experience and becoming a network engineer. So, of course, income wasn't something that I looked for. But I understand that that might not be the case for most of you, right? You have responsibility. You have financial responsibilities. There's no money tree in your backyard that you can pluck money from and take care of those responsibilities. So you got to do things in a very different way. So, Muhammad, you being in that position is really good. You are in a knock, and I'm hoping that you're gaining the experience of networking experience so that you can then utilize that and then maybe move on to another company. So now let's go ahead and start talking about some of these particular questions and what you should actually consider. Okay, so the solution provider sounds great, but it doesn't have to be a Cisco Go partner. You want to go to a solution partner that provides the best opportunities to grow your skills as a network engineer. Keep in mind that companies that are a Cisco Go partner, they have a lot of requirements that they have to meet. And that could mean putting a lot of demand and pressure on you that you may not really like. Now working at a security based company has a lot of promise because that's where you can really grow your skill set, and it is very high in demand. Cyber threats are out there, they're growing. So that means that there are people that are still looking for people related to security. So gaining security experience and working in those environments is also a big benefit as well. And being at a knock is a great place to start and to gain the experience and the knowledge and the hands-on as much as you can. But once you gain that kind of experience, then you want to seriously look at other opportunities within the same company, if that's an option. If not, look at opportunities outside of the company and move on and become a network engineer, whether it is at a security firm or if it is at a solution provider. Therefore, since income is not a priority for you, you are in the best position possible. So once you have your experience that you feel like you have the amount of experience with routing and switching security technologies and so forth, support experience, then go ahead and apply for some of these other jobs. And if it doesn't work out, then just stay in the knock, continue building your skill set, and just continue to keep looking for other opportunities. And when the best one comes up, then you should take it. Okay, and the next career advice question was posted by Mr. Um, R Code. And he says that he just passed his CCNA certification and he's planning on learning more firewalls. So can I give him some advice or ideas on what type of firewalls is best to learn for a beginner? because he's having problems 
applying for jobs as a network engineer because companies are looking for individuals with firewall experience. And answering this is very, very quick. There are also some other past episodes that I want you to check out. But first things first, yes, gaining firewall security experience is really, really important. And I would recommend focusing your learning with Palto Networks and with the Fortigate firewalls. Those are the most popular firewalls that are used and deployed right now. So get that hands-on experience, get that knowledge of how to configure those firewalls. And I will also recommend to check out some of the other episodes that I talk a lot about security as being a valuable field. And specifically, that will be episodes 20 and episode 80. So check that out. Moving along to our third question, which was posted by Rai. He says that he's working as a network engineer for a bank in South America for six years, and he has his CCNA certification. That's really good stuff there. So he works with routing and switching, VoIP, Asterix, which is a um, open source um, phone system, um, checkpoint, firewalls, even SANS, and even with the VMware virtualization. So in a few months, he will move to Toronto to start from scratch. So what kind of work should I apply for there? First off, you're not starting from scratch. You are a network engineer with six years of experience with routing, switching, voice, virtualization, storage. So it's not from scratch. That's all on your resume, that's reflected, and whatever you apply for, that will carry over. So I do wanna make that very, very clear, okay? But if you're looking for what kind of specialty you should be looking at specifically, well, you want to determine what kind of area or areas really interest you the most. Because yes, routing and switching, storage, virtualization, there are very different type of fields. So you need to figure out which ones interest you the most. Then among the areas that interest you, which ones are you much stronger at in your skill set? So yes, you may like storage, but maybe you're not very strong in storage, but you're very, very um, experienced with security and you also like security. So you want to kind of figure out which ones you're very, very strong at. And then from there, you want to look at the job opportunities in Toronto. So you go to job websites and you just do your research and say what kind of network security jobs or storage or data center engineering type jobs exist in Toronto. You want to look at what's available and the amount of jobs for those kind of areas. So remember, it is always about location. Location, location is really important about the amount of opportunities that you have. And luckily you have a wide range of experience. So you being a good fit for one of these particular areas in Toronto is not gonna be a problem. Just keep in mind, you're not starting from scratch. You're just continuing your journey as a network engineer, but just doing it in Toronto, okay? And last but not least, I would recommend to check out some other episodes just for more information about locations and things like that. So check out episodes 21 and 69. I talk a lot about locations and things to keep in mind and how to look for jobs, specifically like in Toronto or anywhere else that you might be going to. And the last career advice question for this video was posted by Suman and he says, uh, first of all, thank you so much for taking time and guiding us for networking. Um, you're welcome. Uh, my question is, being a network engineer, what do you think about Amazon Web Service training or certifications? Is it helpful in networking? Short answer is absolutely freaking lootly AWS is part of cloud computing. Getting experience with anything cloud computing as a network engineer is extremely, extremely valuable. As I talked about before, there are key hot topics right now for network engineers. There is data center there's cloud computing, there's security, there's DevOps. Gaining key experience, heavy experience, certifications, anything in those areas is really important. And Amazon is a cloud computing component that you should take advantage of if that does interest you and to advance your skills further. So yes, getting certified with AWS is great if you do want to move towards a cloud computing path. If you don't, then that might not be a good fit because it's beyond just getting certified or getting experience in certain hot topic areas. If it doesn't interest you, then you're not gonna really keep pushing along and keep pushing the envelope of your career. You gotta like what you're doing as well. So if you like cloud computing and you're looking at AWS and that does interest you, then yes, pursue that particular path. I think that's really, really important. But also you want to make sure that you get the AWS experience to complement your certification. It's really, really a big thing. 
being certified is one thing, but gaining the experience and knowing this is also important for opportunities that you can pursue. So also check out another episode that I um, recorded, which is episode 72, where I talk more about cloud computing because I give more in-depth details about that too. So my final points about our particular set of questions in this video is one, you want to again, build your skill set as much as you can. Two, you want to keep in mind about location and the opportunities that you want, specifically network opportunities in those locations. So those are some of the key takeaways from this video that I want you to keep in mind. And also check out episode 23. I'll throw that in there if you want to know more about some of the stuff of career advice and next steps to keep in mind. And we're done with this episode. So thank you for watching this video. If this video helped you and you want to support this channel further, you can do that from my Patreon page at patreon.com slash routehub. And until next time, keep networking.